Hello everyone, welcome to this video. This time we are going to see how to develop a standalone application for a Raspberry Pi. So we are going to see an introduction, the hardware that we are going to use, how to write the application, then we will test the application and finally we will see how to configure the standalone operation of our application. For this example, we are going to use a Raspberry Pi 0W, but it can be also done in any other model of the Raspberry Pi. So our goal here is to put the Raspberry Pi to work in a standalone fashion. So it is going to execute the program that we are going to develop in a similar way as we would do with a microcontroller board. However, we know that the Raspberry Pi is not a microcontroller board, it's a microcomputer board. So we have an operating system inside our board and we need to execute our program as another task of the operating system. So in order to develop an APP for autonomous operation, we have to follow this four steps here. We have to write the program. We are going to use Python for this. Then we will test and debug the program. Next, we will configure the standalone operation. And finally, we can reboot our system and test that everything is operating correctly. In order to illustrate all the process, we are going to develop a very simple APP. We are going to drive an LED from one of the outputs of the board. Here we can see the schematic for this. So we are using the pin corresponding to the general purpose input output number 14. And then we are using a resistance of 330 ohm LED in series and then connected the cathode of the LED to ground. We have the ground here in this other pin next to the previous one. We have used a 330 ohm resistance in order to have enough current through the LED. This is the typical value. In order to calculate the current that is going to circulate through the LED. We have to remember that the outputs of the Raspberry Pi, the digital level is 3.3 volts. The voltage across the diode is going to be something like 1.5 volts. So with a 330 ohm resistance, then we will have a current through the LED, which is around 5.5 milliamperes. And this is good enough in order to have a good brightness of the LED. We are going to develop a very simple APP. Our objective is to make the LED blink at a frequency of 2 Hertz or what is the same with a period equal to 0.5 seconds. Now we have to write the program for our APP. For this I recommend using the nano editor so we can write nano and the name of the APP, in this case blinkled.py. So here we can see the program that we have developed. We are importing the GPIO library. We are also importing the function sleep from the time library. In this line here, what we are doing is setting the mode of referring the pins of the Raspberry using the channel number of the chip. Then we are disabling here the warnings. Here we define the variable LED equal to 14, which is the number of the channel that we are using. Then here we are setting up this pin as an output. And here we have our main program, which is a loop in which we are just setting the output to 1, waiting for half a second, then setting the output to zero and waiting another half a second. So now we are going to test the program in a real Raspberry Pi. We can see here on this screen the Raspberry Pi under operation. It is now connected to a Wi-Fi. 
So if you are not sure how to set up a Raspberry Pi microcomputer, I recommend you to take a look at this video, Digital Electronics number two, how to set up a Raspberry Pi microcomputer. So now I'm going to open a command window so we can connect to our Raspberry Pi doing an SSH, username, Pi, and the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, which now is 192.168.1.67 sorry so we enter the password and we are connected to our Raspberry Pi we can see what we have in our directory so we have already the program Let's edit the program to see if everything is correct using the nano editor. So we can see here is our program as we have explained before. So we can exit the program using control X. And now we can execute the program by writing Python and the program which is blink led.py so now the program is running and we can see here that the led is blinking at the corresponding frequency we can also see how the console is busy because it is executing our program in order to stop the program we can use the a keyboard and press Control C, and then with this we can interrupt the operation of the program. Otherwise, what we can do is to execute our program in background. So for this, we write again Python and the name of the program, and then we add the symbol and and execute again so we can see now that the program is executing and that the console is free so we can continue working with our console also we have this information here which corresponds to the process number that the operating system has assigned to our program blink led.py we can see all the processes if we like as we know by doing PSA. So we can see all the processes and then we can also check that the program that we are running is named is Python and the process number is 672. If we want to stop the process now we can do fill and the number of the process which is 672. So we can see that now the LED has stopped blinking and if we check the processes now we don't have the process corresponding to uh, Python. We can also make our program executable so we can better identify the process corresponding to our program. So for this I'm going to clear this. So for this we have to do the following. We need to edit our program again. And then the first line of our program, what we are going to do is to inform what is the version of Python that is going to be used to execute our program. So we add this line which is called a shebang and then we add in US Air, US Air slash bin slash python 3 and then we just save with control x and say yes here save and then we have our uh, program ready so the next step is to make our program executable by doing ch mod plus x and then the name blink 
LED dot pi. If we list the directory, we can see now that even the color of our file is green. So this means that this file is executable. So now we can execute our program directly by doing dot slash blink led dot pi and if we want to execute it in the background then we add the symbol and so now the program is being executed again and then we can see here the um, number corresponding to the process if we show all the processes then we can see that now the name corresponding to the process is the same name as our program blink led dot pi so this is easier to identify if we have several programs several python programs running together another interesting command is pgrep with pgrep we can obtain the process number of our program so if we do pgrep and blink led sorry led dot pi then we get this number 982 which is the process number of our program so now that we have checked our application and it is operating correctly, then what we are going to do now is to execute this application at the startup of the system. So we can operate the program in a standalone fashion as we are intending to do. For this, the easiest way is to use the cron scheduler in the operating system. We can access the cron scheduler by writing cron tab dash e and here we can include different lines with different information corresponding to the scheduler. In this case, we are interested in our application being executed at the startup. So we only have to write as follows add reboot and then the name of our program including all the path in this case is home pi and blink led pi and we can include the symbol on to execute the program in the background and this is all now we just exit with control x save and then we just reboot our system by doing sudo reboot now of course our connection has been lost now we have to wait until the raspberry pi reboots and after a little while we should see how the led is uh, going to start blinking. Okay, it takes a little bit doing the starting up but now we can see how the led is blinking and everything is operating correctly okay this is all today thank you very much for watching this video let me know if you have any comment or question and see you in a next video thank you very much and goodbye now